Hi there, Adam here. This month's XDA Developers TV is brought to you by the Samsung Smart App Challenge 2012. Enter for your chance to win your piece of over $4 million in cash prizes by clicking the banner at the top of xdadevelopers.com or by visiting developer.samsung.com. Today is July 4th. Today is the day that we celebrate our independence. Today is the day we get drunk and do stupid stuff with fireworks. So let's get started. So what I've done here is I've attached an old Nokia cell phone to one of these here rockets. Let's see what happens. Yeah, that didn't go so well. You think you can do better? Leave us a video response. Jordan and I will pick out the best one to be featured on XDA TV sometime soon. Just don't do anything illegal. Wait, wait, wait. It's Independence Day. I'm tired of the man keeping me down with that old crusty garbage. It's time for something completely different and new. Roll it. <laughs> On this day of freedom, I thought it would be appropriate to talk about our freedom in Android development. More specifically, our freedom to root our device. That's right. Rooting your device is a right that you are granted. And some companies would have you believe otherwise, but that's just simply not true in the United States. You see, we have something that protects against companies doing shady stuff like that. It's called the Magnuson Moss Warranty Act. According to Title 50 of United States Code, Chapter 50, Section 2304C, Waiver of Standards. The performance of the duties under subsection A of this section shall not be required of the warrantor if he can show the defect, malfunction, or failure of any warranted consumer product to conform with a written warranty was caused by damage, not resulting from defect or malfunction, while in the possession of the consumer or unreasonable use, including failure to provide reasonable and necessary maintenance. Which means they have to prove that you did something to damage your device. You see, Root is the guy who starts up your device. He's the guy who assigns the permissions to every application and user under Linux. In order to root a device, you have to have root access. And that's right, every single Android device out there has a user number zero. Now, in order to explain this a little bit better, we need to take a look at the permission system of Linux. All right, so what I've done is I've hooked up my Infuse 4G, and we're going to use USB to ADB shell into it. And now we can see, who am I? Now, a lot of Linux systems have a database that interprets this user ID, this UID here of 2000. It would say, I'm shell user. Well. Uh, there's no database right now on my system to look that up. That would be contained in the password file, and it's just not defined. So what we're going to do now is we're going to change over to the super user, the uh, root user. We'll use su, switch user binary, and then who am I? So as you can see, I'm now user number zero or root. Now let's take a look at the single binary that actually controls that. We'll type which su. And what we can do is wrap that in quotes, and we can do an ls-l on that uh, which su on the opening quotes, which will execute ls-l system slash bin slash su. And as you can see, this s here represents that we have the sticky bit set, or the super user bit. Now, if you're familiar with Linux permissions, then this will be easy. If not, let me explain a little bit. All right, so these are grouped into sets of three. The first one is a special character. And that special character there is for things like uh, if it's a folder or whatnot. The next three are for the owner of the file, and these are the read, write, and execute bits. The next one is the read, write, and execute permissions for the group of the file. And then the third one is for everyone else. And as you can see, the owner of the file is root. The group of the file is app88. Now you'll notice on our SU binary that it has an S instead of an X. That represents the sticky bit. Instead of chmod0755, SU gets 4755, so it can assume the role of super user. You see, the way this works is the application or the user runs the SU binary. The SU binary actually does all the work. The SU binary then authenticates with the user, giving you this little pop-up on your screen that says allow or grant access. Now, 
what actually happens is the SU binary is just doing that as a little bit of extra precaution so that you're not having everything given super user access. All right, so what we're going to do now is we're going to remove the super user permissions from the switch user binary. So what we'll do is we'll chmod 755, and that's as opposed to 4755, which SU. Now we'll exit out of super user. Now you notice how I can no longer become user number zero. Well, that's because the SU binary no longer has the sticky bit and it's no longer authorized to act as root on a Linux system. All right, so let me see if I got this straight. We can install the super user app from the market. We can install the SU binary. We can place the SU binary anywhere on our system we can run it. But if we set the sticky bit, we void our warranties? Fuck you, this is America. You can't void our warranties unless you prove we caused the damage. Just like you can't prosecute someone for murder just because they own a gun. So I want you guys to have a great Independence Day. Don't forget to add me to your circles on Google Plus and subscribe to this YouTube channel. Until next time, hack on. So that was a really great video. We had fireworks, we had a contest, and we had some really good information. So now there's only one thing left to do. Watermark. Yeah, you remember what we talked about. Oh, come on. You've had more... You, 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 you've had more screen time than anyone else on this show, Watermark. It's time for you to go. Come on, come on, go, go, go. All right, come on in. Ha 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 ha.